Welcome to my talk. Hi everybody, my name is Carl D and I'm going to show you how I created a cool looking sci-fi Java FX based world clock app from scratch. But first, a little bit about myself. I work for Azul Systems and you'll find me on Twitter often tweeting about all things Java and Java FX. Enough about me, let's get started. If you just really want to dig into the code, just head over to my GitHub account at github.com slash carld slash world clock. If you are a beginner, I highly recommend that you go to openjfx.io for great tutorials on how to set up your projects using your favorite IDE or your favorite build tool such as Maven or Gradle. This is an overview of the current progress of the World Clock app. As far as the advanced topics, they will be referenced at the end of the slides. Before we begin the project, here are the project requirements. We, you'll be using Maven, uh, Java 15 or greater, Java FX 15 or greater, and Scene Builder from Gluon HQ, and Git, of course, on your command line, and um, my GitHub account at github.com slash carld slash world clock. That's where you clone the project and get ready and get started. Before I get into a uh, scene builder and actually showing you how I uh, designed it, the clock face and how I assembled things, I just want to run the application and demo what it kind of looks like and what the, the kind of styling that I was going for and some of the controls just to see what it looks like. <clears throat> this is what the project looks like, assuming that you've uh, cloned the project. Just making sure I have the right versions of things. So, okay, I have these SDK man and I switch to Azul. So here um, all you have to do is run project with that command that's the Maven plugin to launch a JavaFX uh, modular application. Here's the launching of the clock. Here we have two cities locations, one in Pasadena, Maryland in the U.S., Amsterdam in the Netherlands with two, two different time zones using Greenwich Mean Time. One is in Central European Time and uh, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Here in this page or this front screen, I have uh, placeholders for the weather and I have a placeholder for the map, which is still in progress and haven't worked on that yet. So here's a config and close button. A config to add in new countries and cities. So in this field, I'll add in sunny now. Here you'll notice uh, styling in California and in the country code US. You don't have to put that. Uh, minus eight. Uh, uh, the offset is from the US, uh, the UK, which is you know zero offset in the UK from here um, in the. East Coast would be negative five and California would be negative eight. So they're in the future by five hours. This is optional. You can hit save. And in these fields, um, there's validation. And 
and these have val validation also. So once entered, you can uh, switch back. Here I use JavaFX animation, and it adds the new city. Back to the form, here I can highlight each item. Um, these buttons um, allow you to move them positionally, and then you can delete them. So there you have it. Next, I will use the Scene Builder tool to show you how I draw and design the clock face. Before going into the Scene Builder tool, let me explain the parts of the clock face. On the left is an H box with text nodes denoting the city and state or country, date info, and in the next position, is a group node comprised of simple JavaFX shapes such as arcs and circles. And lastly is part of the H box is an image of a cloud which denotes the weather. Here you'll notice the red arrows pointing at the hour hand track, the hour hand arc, and the hour hand tip. So here's the scene builder tool. And on the left, here you'll see the various components that you could drag onto the canvas area in this WYSIWYG tool. And so, as like I said earlier, how this is comprised of an H box with a section here and a section in the middle and a section on the right. So in this, in this scenario, um, to be brief, uh, I already have the the parts that comprise of the minute hand parts of the clock. So here under the group, expand that. This is the minute hand or the minute area track where the arc and the circle which represents the tip of the arm is uh, it sits on top of that track. So our job right now is to mimic this for the hour hands. So what we'll do here is over here, got the circle. What you want to do is just drag it over. I, you can actually do this over the group. The fourth item. So let's try to collapse this. And stop. You can see it. Okay. In this part, what you want to do is um, have a little cheat sheet. So this track right here, what you want to do is. here what you can see is the uh, stroke width um, we'll change out the four and this uh, stroke type I would want it centered this is how uh, vector graphics actually um, is when it comes to shapes they typically um, you can draw the circle um, spanning outside the actual circle, or um, or the inside, or centered, based on the width of the stroke. So you kind of want it centered. So 
These are typical um, stroke attributes for the circle, or any shape for that matter. Okay, of course, here you see this um, 100 um, radius, and of course we want to reduce that to like 35, which is, which makes it right there, and then next would make it transparent in the center. Here, I just make it opaque, zero opacity. So it makes it transparent in the center. And then, of course, this black of the stroke. Here, I would make it that nice little gray. Kind of makes it look, um, when you have a darker theme in science fiction or whatnot, it kind of looks like a shadow or um, as the hour hand arc actually hovers over it. So next up is um, the actual hour hand arm. That would be an arc. So go in this shape section. Grab that. Throw that uh, right there. Let's make sure. So in the same manner as the circle, this arc um, is very similar. It first fills it with a default color. What we want to do is make this area transparent and the stroke would simply be a similar width. So here in the design tool, where you see the color, it says color fill, and in the opacity, you just you just start taking that and taking it to there. Then once you're there, what you want to do is of, again, similar to the circle, you want to change some of these stroke types. Kind of gives it that on the ends of the arc or any bends that you can make them rounded or squared off or or just you know flat so let's see so let's okay 
and also mess with that. So so next what you want to do is in this in this area the the actual archetype there's three different ones there's the open the chord and the round so what you want to do is just make it open it kind of looks like it, it kind of looks like like the letter c so So now what you want to do is uh, we can change the color now. Give it the the orange that we want in the demo. Good. Um, we also want to kind of give it a little bit maybe transparency. So next, what we do is um, make the the length of it a little shorter. case we make that we, we'd also center it just like we did with the um, minute minute hand arc and here this is the critical part where the start angle and the length have to be um, it's a counterclockwise starting at three o'clock which is zero degrees so at the start angle, it's zero degrees. And then the length, so we're just designing, so we kind of want it looking like three o'clock. So at that point, it would be 90 degrees counterclockwise. From three o'clock to the 12 o'clock position gives you uh, the little nice arc that sits like that. So now that it looks in this manner, what you want to do is position it so you want it in a stack bank, puts them kind of centered. So what you want to do is um, position that over top of the track. Now that we have the hour hand arc over its track, we can now give it a glow effect. Next, we can enter a secondary effect into the first effect. Now for the last part of the clock is to create the hour hand tip. Here you'll notice the circle's quite large, so let's make that a little bit smaller. It's 
since the hour hand tip is in the center, now we want to position it. Since it's in a group, we have to use the translate X and move it at 35, matching the radius of the circle. Now for the last part of the hour hand tip, what you want to do is make it look like a glowing orange ball. For the glowing orb effect, you want to make sure the gradient first stop color is white. To continue the progress of our world clock, in part two, I actually use trigonometry to uh, position the arc and the circle of the minute hand and the hour hand. Here I use lambda functions to receive the hour and the minutes in order to calculate the extent angle and um, also um, the tip of the arm to position it around the clock face. Now we'll launch the world clock application with different backgrounds. Last but not least is custom styling to a UI form in JavaFX to allow the user to enter in locations uh, for different time zones for the world clock. For the last part of this presentation, I'm going to show you how I styled the uh, locations configuration form. Mostly what I'll do is explain how I styled the save button which is very similar to all the other controls. If you just understand uh, pseudo states and uh, when the mouse hovers over the button. So here's a styling for a, the save button with the class dot save dash location dash button. The first part describes the font information. Here I have a custom font, Roboto Medium, and uh, the rest is describing the font. Next section is how you would describe the background uh, information and also the border. In this section, like we saw before, we have the uh, save button and when you hover over a button, here are the insets or the background insets for this state. Next is how it's armed. This is when you press it but you don't let go yet. The insets if you notice, there's three spots where the color, it's aqua, where the first position says zero, 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 zero. That's saying that the outer part or the shape of the background, there's no insets where it's aqua. Then the next color is black, which is indented or inset one pixel and then the next is the aqua again which makes 
the aqua square that's surrounding the save actually um, offset as if it looks like it's being pressed, which is uh, the insets are four, two, two, and four. Another thing to note about the insets is the of the four numbers that you get, the first number is the top, the second number is the right, the third number is the bottom, and the last is the left hand side. So when they are reduced. So if you want to learn more about CSS, uh, a really good resource, which is a little hard to dig, but what you want to do is uh, look at the source code of JavaFX and look for Medina's uh, CSS, Medina.CSS. It's a file that's located in the source code and that shows you how uh, it was originally done. So this is the last part of the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is this part is under construction still. So the map APIs and the weather APIs and JLink and JavaFX's JavaScript bridge is it, it's in the links below. So thank you for having me. I hope you have a great conference. And if anyone has any questions, let me know.